The Azorius Senate is the most organized and controlling guild in all of Ravnica. It values order, control, and laws above all else. Its members look down on Ravnica's violence and corruption while believing itself to be the one and only possible solution to all of its problems. Now, how does one implant this self-righteous totalitarian view of structure and order as a cohesive theme in its artwork? You could show the act of laws being written, or soldiers patrolling the streets, or minds being examined by mind mages. Now, while all these are valid representations, it's really impractical to expand these specific themes across dozens of artworks that will portray a variety of subjects. The real answer is found in the guild symbol itself. The guild symbol serves as a microchasm of the entirety of the guild. Its shape as a triangle serves as a prison for the inner circle, encapsulating it and completely covering it up. The triangles on the outside have a bold blue stroke outlining them, while the symbols that make up the circle in the middle aren't really outlined and are really scattered across the entire center. Each of the triangles represents a column of the Senate itself. The Sova branch, which serves as a judiciary branch, the Liev column, which handles law enforcement and more recently precognition, and finally the Jelen column, which is the legislative branch. The circle in the center symbolizes the chaos and violence that is present within the city that the guild feels the need to control. Compare this to the opposing guild of Rakdos. The former is composed of straight lines and perfect circles, while the latter has only curved and imperfect lines. Within all of the artworks that betray the Azorius Senate, the straight lines and enclosing triangles are the two main artistic themes which portray the structure within it. These two themes are most clearly seen in the architecture which makes up the main guild hall of New Prov. Three triangular towers encompass a circular fountain. While both artworks of Hallowed Fountain show this building, let's look deeper into the newest artwork by Jung Park. Here, the distinction between the chaos and order is further represented. The color's contrast here is clear. The red-orange circles present in the center are overwhelmed and captured by the powerful opposing blue of not only the guild hall, but also the sky and the buildings in the background. The bright beams of light are straight vertical lines that mimic prison bars. The point of view has us looking up at the grand pillars, making us feel small and powerless against this imprisoning. As for the theme of triangles, there are plenty present in this piece. The obvious one is the three pillars forming a triangle, as well as each being a triangle themselves. The rooftops on the sides are also topped off with triangles. The bases of each pillar of light have two pairs of three triangles grouped together. All of these triangles reinforce the control and suffocation of the Azoria Senate. There is one more though. This one is extremely subtle. Notice the three spy bugs flying around. If you connect these bugs, you'll find a triangle that captures the floating circle in the center, creating the Azoria symbol hidden in the picture. These same spy bugs are also found in the artwork for Prying Eyes by Megala Vinivu. Although there are four of them, their position still forms a triangle, chasing this woman through the streets. But past that, the same color contrast is found in this piece as well. Magali paints the woman and the background using the same color palette, a very soft, cooler browns and grays. All this shows that the woman is trying to blend into her surroundings, yet the bright, powerful blue and silver of the spy bugs still find her. They pop out of the background and demand attention. You can notice this more when you compare the blue of the spy bugs to the blue of the scarf that the woman is wearing. These spy bugs are also present in Deploy. While this piece only has two spy bugs, it still enforces some of the common themes of the Azorius art. Just like in the previous piece, the spy bugs are a bright titanium white and silver, and blue on a darker faded background. If you compare these spy bugs to those in the Demir Guild, you'll notice that those are all black with a darker blue. They blend into the fall setting of Ravnica. While the House Demir wishes to be undetected in its surveillance, the Azorius Senate wants the population to know they are watching. This pride in their ability to watch gives them a huge chunk of their power. A huge theme found in the artworks for all the Azorian Senate pieces is the theme of straight parallel lines shown to display imprisonment. This can be first found in an unbreakable formation by Matt Stewart. Here we have the Azorius guards making a defensive line. In this piece, there are three sets of parallel lines that we're going to look at. The first starts from the elbow of each soldier, runs through their spear into the tip. While perspective makes these lines appear slightly tilted towards one another, if you were to visualize the soldiers in real space, then they would be much more parallel. This is an example of realism and perspective triumphing symbolic patterns when planning the composition of the piece. The second are the edges of the shields going vertically, creating a symbolic wall. The final one comes from the floor tiles in the bottom. These run perpendicular to the lines created by the shields. These sets of parallel lines build the entire composition of the piece to make you feel as if you're staring at a brick wall. While this is a very blunt showing of parallel lines, Sentinel's Mark by Zenzo Shen has a much more subtle approach. The three parallel lines that go vertically are made by the lamps on the left, 
the posture of the soldier center, and the corner of the wall on the right. Yet there is a set of parallel lines that go horizontally from the eyes of the soldier. The rays protruding from the glowing triangle follow a single path through the soldier's line of sight. Once again, the Azorius' presence shines bright through a dull background to remind the viewer the will of the Senate will power over the will of the individual. Now the guild symbol over the soldier's head does remind me of a specific artistic technique used in medieval artworks. Whenever a character in an art piece was holy or divine in some way, they would have a halo of light around their head, closely resembling the sun in their mind. Taking this historical context in mind, it is fair to analyze the circle of the Azorius symbol over the soldier's face as a sign of purity and divinity, at least from the perspective of the guild itself, but only slightly so, since only the smallest sliver of the central circle touches the man's face. There are other characters in artworks that have this halo over their heads, one being Senate Guild Mage, but we'll get to them later. The only two creatures which possess the halo completely are the Sphinxes of the Senate, Sphinx of New Prof by Sarah Winters and Sphinx's Insight by Scott Murphy. In the first piece, the halo over the Sphinx's head is made up of the light shining from the heavens above. It's imperfect, but still very much present and more important than anything. It's not a piece of metal or a projection of a symbol, but pure light. In Sphinx's Insight, the halo is thrice around its head and in perfect circles. The almost flat perspective and style of this piece more closely resemble the medieval pieces of divine art. Now, pivoting back to the grand theme of lines and triangles we looked at earlier, they are found in the composition of the following pieces, through the lines of sight and lines of motion. Summary Judgment by Doruchenko Alexander uses the triangle in its composition to display not only one directional force, but a clashing of ideals through the use of colors. The soldier's lance creates the base of the triangle. Then from this base, everything connects to a singular point in the soldier's hand. The flashes of light, the blue streaks in his bottoms, the line from the right arm through his shoulders and then left arm, even his line of sight are all focused on that singular point. Everything about the soldier creates a visual triangle aimed directly at the chest of the Rakdos member. This piece also uses color in an exceptionally good fashion. The piece is basically just four colors. The blue represents the side of order and rigidity. The yellow is a point of impact, pushing away the red, which is then tattered and hurt in the opposing side. And finally, the background is a simple muddled gray that serves as a blank slate that makes the other colors stand out even more. This use of triangles to create a directional force is also found in these two pieces by Izzy, Absorb and Arrestor's Zeal. Arrestor's Zeal's triangle is formed by the spear, the arm extending through the leg, and the empty space in the bottom. Everything in this piece aims at a singular point off screen. Much like in Sentinel's Mark, the eyes of the soldier will tell the viewer's eye where to begin. I also love how not only his clothes signals a downward force, but so does the light fading as he falls and the brush strokes below and above the circle. Absorb uses an immense amount of triangles to show the struggle of the Azorius magic trying to contain the red mana coming in from the left. The center of the main triangle creates a point of impact between two forces, the two distinct background colors being a faded red and a low blue on the sides push against one another and form a blended purple within the triangle. This struggle is also shown by a singular triangle formed by the lines of mana from the red side pushing against the smaller blue triangle in the opposite direction. This creates a sense of tension in the viewer even if just subconsciously. Now, pulling back to see the piece, we can notice one final thing. The point of focus isn't in the center, it's to the left. If you wanted to show the struggle of two opposing forces equally, in this case being the red and blue, you would place the point of focus in the center in order to create a balanced composition. But this piece doesn't even try to show a battle between two forces. It instead shows a complete domination of one by the other. The blue side takes about two-thirds of the area of the piece. Its triangles are firm and well-defined and reinforced by one another. While the red side has a singular triangle without a base, whose lines are painted like rope being pulled apart. Now one smaller theme I'd like to present before we move on to my concluding and overall favorite piece of the guild, is the use of triangles in the positions and formations of the guild soldiers. This is found in two pieces. The first is High Alert by Darkin and Code of Constraint by Egateria Bodenmark, I think. In both these, the soldiers create a triangle in each respective squad. There isn't really more to it than that, but I just really found it worth noting at the least. Now, Senate Guild Mage by Jiho Slee is to me the quintessential representation of all the techniques and themes that make up the Azoria Senate. Let's run down the list real quick. Firstly, there are triangles made up by the circles in her armor and the light of her hands with the floating circle above, but those are really easy to spot. 
There is a triangle made up by the pose which she is in, the line running from hand to hand, and then connecting at her lower torso. Even if slightly hidden, all three pillars of the buildings are shown from this perspective, encompassing the floating circle creating the senate symbol from the architecture itself. There are also three magical circles emanating from her right hand. The lighting of the sky reinforces the theme that there is only goodness within the senate. Outside the triangle of the buildings, the sky is grey, but within it it shines brightly. But more interestingly is how the shadows are used regarding the walls of the pillars. Only the walls facing inward are lit. This means that the light source, is in this case being the sun, is directly above the floating circle in the sky. This can be interpreted one of two ways. The first is that the sun is literally over the sky when this moment was captured. Or, that since the sun cannot be seen in frame, the light source is actually the circle itself, symbolizing the sun. The sun, through many ideologies in human history, is seen as the ultimate sign of life, power, and divinity. The, in this case, it's represented of the Azori Ascendant itself. Now, the religious iconography in this piece is just exquisite. This piece holds many parallels to the medieval art of Europe. The first I've spoken about already, this being the halo around the woman's face. This being a sign of divine power and status whenever it's used in old art. The pillar of light though, coming out from the leftmost tower, crosses over with the horizontal light radiating from her hand, creating a cross. Saints in medieval art were often depicted holding divine symbols in their hands in order to identify them amongst, you know, them all kind of looking the same in this art. Few as direct as a cross though. The guild mage also has a light radiating from her left hand. While it could be a stretch, it makes sense to infer that this represents the Globius Crucifer, a medieval Christian symbol of power. It is mainly held by royalty and specifically divine beings when represented in medieval religious artwork. Senate Guildmage uses all of the techniques and motifs that we've seen throughout the entire video to display one singular position of power, authority, and divinity which perfectly encapsulates the structure of the Azorius Senate.